Good morning. <laughs> this is an experiment. Listen. <laughs> I'm experimenting here. I've had people complain that they haven't been able to see what I'm writing on the whiteboard. And so I downloaded this software that can adjust what we're seeing. Now, other you get some glasses and go visit, you know, an eye doctor, or you got to help me out here, okay? Because I really want to use this whiteboard to help you. Now, now watch what I'm going to do, and and I'm going to change the settings. There's this a little further away, a little closer, a little closer there. I can go, I can move this thing up, I can move it down. Uh, you know, I, I have the ability to control this uh, with my mouse. So this is all new to me and, and trying to teach and trying to do this is, you know, it's going to be quite a project. Okay, uh, to be quite honest with you, I, I don't even know if anybody can hear me or see me. Now it's live and there's nothing there. Okay, so there we go. 90, that's a 90 view. I mean, this thing is, is so incredible that I can even, you know, get right up on it. Oh, so, oh. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm learning. Okay, so this is, we're going to call this 60 per, 65. This is 78. This is 90 degrees. Tell me which one looks better. Now I heard people looking at this uh, with, with different devices. Some people looking on it with their cell phone and some people have cell phones that are 20 years old and they got a screen about this big. You need to go buy a new cell phone. <laughs> Get one of these big ones. Others are looking at it on a uh, like an iPad and others are looking on on the main screen on the computer. So obviously that's going to affect the way you see it. Again this is 90 it's called 90 degrees, it's 78, 65. Okay, I'm going to write a few things on the board. I, I think I'm going to start off in the middle one. That's a 78. Let me uh, kind of move this thing down a little bit. And then when I stand up, we'll see what happens. But if there's anybody there that can comment on what they think is better, then I will make it again. Again, let me let me tell you again, this is 90, 78, a little closer, 65, the closest. Okay, I can make it closer. Okay, then I can also adjust this thing up. I have to do it with the mouse. Now I might get all into um, just teaching and forget all about it. You know, so it also has a thing that does uh, image adjustments. Okay, so I can stay with what we call the original. Uh, it, it may be better background if I do it the bright. Or then they even have a blossom. You tell me which, which you prefer now. And they even have forest. Ooh. <laughs> Firm. Hey, I like that. Okay, it's some good contrast there. Uh, glaze. That was kind of interesting, isn't it? And then they got what's called mono. Okay, it's, uh, so let me go on backwards. Mono, glaze, film, forest, blossom, bright. And then you can tell me which way you like it best. Okay. Uh, again, that's 65, 78, 90. I'm going to go to 78, kind of in between. 
the key is seeing this whiteboard, isn't it? Uh, now I'm looking at it right here, image adjustment. Let me let me try something just to see if it helps. Uh, let me go to a filters. Uh, let me blossom forest film. I, I, let me go back to adjustments with that. The key is being able to see on the whiteboard. Okay. So let me just stay right there for a moment and then we'll see how this works. Okay. If anybody's viewing, you want to make comments, by all means do it. I can read them. So far, I haven't seen anything. Okay. So uh, we're, we're turning to John 15. And I'm just going to share a little bit, mainly because this is an experiment. I'll go back over this uh, tomorrow. Look, if you like these videos, why don't you share them with other people? Okay, you know somebody that's lost, or somebody that's a uh, Christian, that's, you know, backslidden or carnal, or somebody just wants some good Bible teaching, share them. You know, uh, it doesn't cost anything, it's free, so uh, we want to um, get the word out as much as possible. Uh, we talked yesterday about standing and stay. We talk about Jesus being the vine. We talk about uh, everybody's a branch. Some are a live branch. Some are a dead branch. We talk about God the Father is the one that prunes the branches so they can bear a lot of fruit. And the Holy Spirit enables that. Okay. So that's pretty much where he is. He uses that analogy, you know. To it's kind of I, I like using those two is is because you can visualize them in your mind, and and it helps to retain the the, the wisdom that he's imparting to us. Okay, now he's going to say something else. And there's a lot of people that I argue with a lot of people over this, especially today's woke people, uh, concerning what he's going to talk about here right now. Uh, John 15, verses 9 uh, through 17. That's what we're going to do. Uh, as the Father has loved me, and Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. In other words, it's the same way. The same way God loved me, Jesus is saying, my Father, I have loved you the same way. Now, he's going to define what that same way is. And that's how you can know whether you truly love the Lord or you're a fraud. There's a lot of people, oh, I love Jesus, and they go on Sunday and they worship and sing and jump up and down, you know, and, and then they go out and they flip and off drivers that cut off in front of them and do all kind of things. You know, uh, we're going to see whether you really do. Okay, so Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now, first thing he says, first condition, and if you really love, now remain in my love. It's, it's not going and coming whenever you feel like it. He said, remain in my love. If, now here's the condition, if you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love. Okay? So love requires obedience. It's not lust. It's love. And love at times is very hard to do. I have people trying to define, oh, it's this romantic feeling. Um, it's just oh, the candle lights and bubble baths and, and music and all that stuff. Uh, that's romance. That's not love, biblical agape love. Okay? That's more Hollywood. Okay? Can you do those things? Yeah, it's once in a while. I'm not much of a romantic Okay, uh, if, 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 if somebody puts a bunch of, uh, of candles in a round of tub for me, I, I, to my mind, logically thinks, why would you do that? There's water there, you know? There's light already in here. I don't need candles in here. I need to shower and get out of here. You know? <laughs> Stop. If you're a romantic, you're looking for romantic guys, I'm not... That's not me. I would, that, would, that, would, that would probably turn me off. Okay, so, but I understand biblical love, because biblical love has to do with sacrifice and obedience. He says, now remain in my love. If, if, here's the condition, if you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. So he's saying, hey, 
as the Father has loved me, I'm going to love you. This is the way that we demonstrated our love. And that was through obedience, not through romance. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm teasing a lot. I don't, I don't get down with people that are very romantic and they want to watch uh, Love Story or uh, Romeo and Juliet and all that thing. Hey, everybody aspires to some of that. Okay? But that's not all of life. Uh, life is about getting down to the nitty gritty. And this is what Jesus is talking about here. He says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And that is absolutely true. He's talking like a father. I know even with my own kids, when they're obedient, right away in the right way with the right heart attitude, it brings a lot of joy to me. Uh, I don't care what they do as long as they're walking in the spirit. Okay, if they're walking in spirit, that's going to bring a lot of joy to me. You know, they're all adults. They've got to make their own choices in life. But what brings me joy is when I see them walking in obedience to the Lord and to his word. Okay, my commandment is this, love each other as I love you. So in the same way. Now, so how do you define that? Is he obedient to one another? Okay, now you have authoritative structure in a home where the 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 man is the head of the home and the wife is to uh, support him by being submissive to him and the children are to submit to mom and dad you know or if you have other authoritative structure whether it's at work or in government or an ecclesiastical authority in your church uh, God recognizes that but you're obedient by honoring that authority that's over you Okay, whether you agree with it or not. Okay, unless what they're asking to do goes contrary to scripture. In that case, civil disobedience or, you know, you can explain, hey, here's the reason why I'm not going to do this. Okay, so let, let me just break this down for you. I'm, I'm going to write just because I want to. And I want to see, I'm going to try to use some of my filter. Okay, let me get this out of the way here. Here's God the Father. Okay? He loves his son Jesus. Jesus in turn loves the Father. And when he says in the same way I want you to love each other. And how did he say to do that? By being obedient. Okay. Now let's try a little experiment here with this board. Okay. Hopefully you can see it. If not, I'm going to move it a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go to ad adjustments. 65. There, is that a little better for you? Okay, can you see God, Jesus, same? Not, if not, by all means, make comments. Okay, again, we're in the... Uh, let me change the way I'm... I'm uh, image adjustment. Okay, okay, we're going to go to filters. That's back to the original. You tell me if you see it better in the original or the way I just had it. Or does it look better on the whiteboard like this? That's called bright, blossom, forest, film, glaze, mono. If you could tell me two things, which way it looks better to you and what kind of device you're using to view it, that would really help me because what I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, on uh, having to decide how I'm going to work this. I'd rather keep my mind on what God's word has to say, okay? This is at a 90%, um, how far away, 78 and that's the, 
close to 65. Okay, let me read a little bit more to you. I got it at 65. Uh, let me go back to 78. Okay. Uh, he says this, my command is this, that you love each other as I love you. Now, he's going to talk about the depth of love. How great of obedience can you be? How great of love can you have? Okay, and, and, and he says this, Greater love has no one than this, than one lays down his life for his friends. In other words, you give up your life. Now, how many are going to feel romantically inclined to do that? Okay, probably no one. It's, it's not romance that's going to lead you to lay down your life and throw your body over a live grenade or sacrifice, uh, you know, uh, money to educate your kids at home or to do the thing that's necessary in order to be obedient to God, okay? Uh, it's the, at the depth, the greatest thing you can do is to give up your life. And, and it's even greater if you die one time, you throw your body on a grenade. That's just one event. But if you die daily, that's when Jesus says, if you prove you're my disciple, if you take up your cross, which is a symbol of death, and you walk daily in death, dying to myself all day and alive to God. And in doing that, being obedient to God and doing. And you know, that's not romance. You know what it is? It's discipline. It says, I'm going to do this irregardless of the way I feel. People are so caught up in feelings today. Feelings are good. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's ways that God has given us to naturally produce feelings, like after you work out. You know, that's a great feeling. You know, or, uh, but feelings come and go. You can work out and you feel great, or your team wins and your team loses. You know, <laughs> so it, it, it comes and goes. But obedience... Discipline, that's not a feeling, that's a firm commitment of the will. And that's how God says he wants you to love one another. Okay, what is a vow, a marriage vow? People get married and divorced here, they don't think nothing of their vow anymore. Okay, it's, it's a commitment of the will to saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you through thick and thin, you know, until death do us part. A gal the other day, she uh, was married to what she thought was a wonderful guy, was married for about nine years until she was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. And uh, while she was still in the early stages, her husband decided he didn't want to go through that, divorced her, walked away. And she died. She did die. And they were doing a little interview about her, and I thought, man, what a, what a, punk that guy was, you know. Uh, my aunt, Alicia, uh, her husband was a poor, poor pastor in a small church in Abernathy, Texas, and was hit by a truck. And uh, coming home from doing a, another job to support his family, and it left him a paraplegic. They didn't know he was going to make it through the night, but he lived another 13 years, and she stuck with him all through that painful torture and everything he... And he was 50 years old when that hit happened to him. Okay, it happened to him the same year it happened and then the same month that it happened to Johnny Erickson, if you know who she is, Tata. She's still alive today doing a fantastic ministry. That's obedience. That's sacrifice. Uh, people, that is love. Okay? Now that people try to define love some other way, that's not love. It's just condition. If I love you, if I love you because of, you know, it's all about getting, not giving. Love is sacrificial. Okay, he says this. I've called you. He says this. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Okay, we're in the inside circle. What, what God and Jesus discuss, he lets us know too. Okay, the reason a lot of people don't know is because they're not in a relationship with him. 
He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you to go and bear fruit. And there we go. As Jesus is the, is the vine. God is the one with the Holy Spirit that is the pruning his desires that we abide, remain in him so that we can bear a lot of fruit because apart from him, we can do nothing and nothing equals nothing. God wants us to do his will, his way, according to his divine resources. He says, you did not choose me, and that's true, but I chose you to go and bear fruit. We were personally called. Fruit that will last, in other words, it's going to count for eternity. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Okay. So we see that God loves Jesus. Jesus loves God. Jesus loves us. He wants us to love one another. He defines what love is as an action, as an act of the will. It has nothing to do with feelings, okay? Feelings can come. They may be there. They may not. I know a lot of times I do things. I don't feel like doing them. I just do them because I know that's what God wants me to do, okay? And I get faithful. Then I'm, afterwards, I'm amazed so many times that feelings do come. And I, for the most part, it's this. I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I went ahead and, and obeyed God rather than, just going and doing my own thing. Okay, any insights you can give for me right now? I can hear. I I met many frauds. Learn, yeah. If you if if uh, if you want to meet people that talk, you know, a big talk, you know, but they don't have any life in them. I have people all the time. They talk about love and they talk about, but when you see what they really do, what they're really committed to, it's not there. Okay, and then you begin to recognize, you know, what is, is, you know. So, God bless you. Have a good day. Any comments you can make uh, to help me to give this a better uh, view, let me know those questions that I ask you. Give me the information and tell me what kind of deep values you're working with. Okay, y'all have a great day and go and uh, do the right thing. God bless you all.